It's time for the Strange O'Clock Podcast, where you get to hear strange news with Christian views. Welcome to the Strange O'Clock Podcast with Michael and Jerry. We have our honored and special and talented guest, Mike Stibbs, with us with Camp Hermon. Welcome, Mike. Hey, guys. How's it going? Very good. How are you? Doing Hello. good. Awesome. We're happy to have Great you here. To be here. Yeah. So, Mike, we've listened. We slash I have been listening to a lot of your uh, testimonials and various podcasts, and uh, we just think you have an awesome story and and testimonial of of how you got saved and how you got into uh, video production and uh, podcasting, and then ultimately with with, with Camp Herman, sorry, Camp (laughs) Herman. (laughs) <laughs> I want to say Herman, <laughs> Camp Camp Herman. So, so Mike, tell us about yourself. Tell us about your testimonial, how you came to know the Lord and, and your background and supernatural experiences. All right. Father God, we just, um, we come before you and our ultimate goal here is to glorify you, glorify your son, Jesus Christ, and just um, lead and guide us in where this conversation goes. And our hearts are to bring Christians that are already saved, just to bring them closer to you. And if people that are not saved happen to listen to this, that we would get them thinking about you and your kingdom and your son and all of the stuff that's happening around us today that ultimately points to you. So we just honor you and we exalt you in Jesus name. Amen. Yeah. So I'll just, I'll give you just um, a quick rundown of my testimony. Um, But I grew up in Los Angeles, California. I began playing in a rock band. I don't know. I was like 14 or 15. Um, My life started taking this drastic churn because of the music. And I got, I got addicted to drugs real bad, blah, blah, blah. You can kind of fill in the gaps there. But um, at the age of, I would say, I think I was 29 or 30, I began to encounter uh, God in a, a really major way. And, um, I was extremely, um, I was extremely addicted to opiates at the time, um, when I was, you know, having these encounters with God and he led, he led me out of that. And within like a year of meeting him, I was completely clean. Right. And so I could go into all the details, but really it's not important. The important part is, is the God part. But um, I did become a bartender um, within there too. So I'm, I'm playing in a band, I'm tending bar. I'm always around drugs, alcohol. And, you know, it just, it was a tiring lifestyle. And, you know, God, you know, Jesus says, you know, come to me who, you know, if you need rest, you know, just come to me. And it's, Amen. it's, it's true. It, you know, I could say, you know, people will say, oh, well, that's good for you, but it doesn't work for me. But it's, it's not about, it's not about what works. It's about the truth. And at the end of everything, if you're looking for truth, you're going to find Jesus and, you know, he's going to help you. It's going to make your, it's going to make your life make sense. It's not going to necessarily make your life better, but it will make sense. Your, your position of, of what you're supposed to do on this planet begins, begins to make sense. So yeah, sex, drugs, rock and roll. Jesus came in, switched everything up and then I got saved and then it, you know, life did get a lot harder from there, but um, yeah. Michael B, do you have a question? Yeah, I've been in the um the restaurant food service scene and you know the the highest level you can get besides restaurant managers, bartender. You can make a lot of money doing that, but it's very hard to yes. I mean, how did you kind of get out of that whole I mean that's it's such a black hole especially in the states, you know, the whole bartending, it's fun, you know, you get but you spend up all you end up spending all your money on that lifestyle too. So <laughs> Well, yeah. So I was, um, so like you say, it's a black hole. It most definitely is. Um, so yeah, I was, I I was 24 when I first started bartending and, um, it, it, it just got worse and worse, but I was so tired, so addicted. Like I needed, I needed something to change in, in my life. 
And so my, my, I started to kind of just call out to God, you know, very, just generally speaking, God help me, you know, if you're there, like I could definitely use some help right now. Right. And, uh, my dad had moved to Florida, um, back in like 2005. And he started going to this like charismatic church and he, he sent me these like sermons that were on CD back in the day when we used to listen to CDs. And so he sent them to me. He's like, Hey Mike, you know, you can listen to these if you want, but I just feel like you need to hear them. So I had them sitting in my truck for a period of time. I eventually put them in the CD player and it was like, as soon as I put it in, and I started listening to it like something was different. Something was, I could feel something different about um, the way that I guess Jesus was always portrayed to me, even though I, you know, I did go to Christian school in the past and whatnot. I was hearing, um, I was hearing a very different Jesus than I was, I was used to hearing. And um, so that's kind of what started it. It was like, I was crying out. And then this information, these CDs came across my path and then I, I put them in. And like I said, a year, it took a year, but then the truth started to take hold. And I was, you know, I just was able to get out of that lifestyle. And it's funny too, because um, I don't often think about this all that much, but I remember like the last like year that I was bartending, like I had quit, I quit smoking cigarettes, I quit drinking. And like people around me um, knew that something was different because I was actually bartending um, at a casino. So with all of the drugs and drinking and stuff, I also had a really, really bad gambling problem, right? Wow. Um, to, like as if it wasn't already enough. But um, the last year I quit all of that stuff and I wasn't hanging out and like people were coming up to me and they were just saying, Mike, something is different about you. I don't know what it is, but something is different about you. And man, I would just, I would preach the gospel right to them, wow. man. For like the last awesome. year I was like the bartender preacher, but I couldn't stay in that lifestyle though, you know, um, for too much longer, but yeah, God is just, I mean, it's. I can't, awesome. you can't, you can't explain it, but you know, once you know that he's God, like you just know, like nobody could That's take right. it away from you with reason mm -hmm. or quote unquote logic. Two things, Mike, did you work at Hard Rock Cafe like me? No. And okay. You don't have to say which casino then. I'm just, no, I'm, I'm just I, I, I could, I could tell you it was, um, it was the biggest one in Southern California at the time. I'm sure it still is. It was um, wow. near San Diego, Pachanga Resort and Casino. Oh, wow. Is that near Temecula? Yeah, that no, it's or... it's in Temecula, yeah. Oh, my God. I was literally just there. Oh, my gosh. No, oh, my God. I was just, <laughs> just there. A um, friend of mine's son died, actually. Oh, um, sorry. Addicted to alcohol and gambling in that same area. So maybe... Maybe you guys cross paths at some point. So that's interesting. And what kind of uh, CDs, what kind of sermons or like who, who was it? Do you remember the the name? Um, well, yeah. So, it, so the interesting part about, about all of that is um, so like hindsight is a little bit different now that I'm well-versed, you know, within the Bible, but this dude was straight up prosperity gospel. Okay. Okay. Wow. And so I was, I guess, technically you could say that I got saved under the prosperity gospel, wow. but there wow. was, there was, um, there was this idea that he would, that he said that I still hold on till today, right? Like that, that you can change your life with mm. the words that come out of your mouth, right? And wow. we could take yes. that in, we could take that in the wrong direction and use it for the wrong reasons all yes. we want. And right. it becomes a false gospel. But yes. when he was saying that, the words that started coming out of my mouth were is that I'm a son of God, I'm clean, I'm gonna clean up my life, I'm gonna figure this out, I'm gonna get back on track. And I just started to just see the world and see my circumstance more positively, mm -hmm. right? And, um, you know, of awesome. course, over the years, God God kind of detangled me from a lot of the, the false doctrines that I learned. Um, but nevertheless, I still, I still hold on to, man, like the words that you speak, man, yes. it's, 
it's going, I'm not going to say it's going to manifest, but you're priming right. yourself in a certain direction by your words. And I think that that's just like a, it's a spiritual law. I mean, it's yes. even a natural right. law. Like if I, if I, if I wake up in the morning and I start thinking about donuts and that's all I'm thinking about, dude, <laughs> I'm eventually going to eat a donut. Right. You know what I mean? Yes. But if I wake up in the morning and I just, I, I train myself to go after the things of God, then that's Amen. what you're going to, that's what you're going to do. And so, right. yeah, I don't, I don't want to get off on a tangent about prosperity gospel and how wicked some of those ones are, but going back to your question, Michael, um, the dude that, that was on the CDs, he ended up uh, pretty much being in so many different scandals. He fell away and oh, no. um, amazing. And God revealed that wow. to me because like, because after six months of being saved, I heard the news of this guy. And I remember I was so heartbroken for about 10 minutes and I was like oh, literally man. crying. I was like, God, is this, does this mean that everything that I experienced wasn't real? And I could feel the spirit of God. He said, no, nope, it's my word. It's not Amen. him. Hmm. It was wow. the truth that you heard started to transform yes. you. So it's not about this wicked, you know, sex addicted pastor that's ruining people's lives is that there was a portion that he was speaking just from being trained up. That was truth. And that truth, Powerful. you know, took, took hold. So, um, so yeah, I, that's I, a really I, important point. Yeah, exactly. You know, and I because, learned, I learned mm -hmm. right away not to depend on people, you know, for that. Uh-huh. Mike, I have a question that has been kind of hatching in my mind ever since I've been listening to your testimonials is, well, first of all, I just want to say praise God and thank Jesus uh, uh, that he saved you uh, from everything that you were addicted to. I think everybody to some degree uh, has some sort of addiction, whether it's minimal or maximal, and I'm making up words, uh, but I there's a question that actually hatched in my mind. So I know that you uh, are a skilled guitarist and, um, and that you um, – you make music as well. And so when you started in the band um, at age 14 um, and you got into, you know, like you said, the, the, the unholy trinity, sex, drugs, rock and roll, uh, do you feel like that some of the people in your, I'm not trying to have you out your family, but but was there any type of anything in your nu nuclear family that could have influenced you or was it all 100 percent the the company that you kept within the the the, the rock band lifestyle? Yeah, I mean, um, my dad was definitely into music, but, um, you know, it was, it's hard to even say, but I, I was going to Christian junior high at the time, and it was kind of a way that I was rebelling against, against that because there was, you know, even at that age, I saw a lot of hypocrisy within that. And so, like, my... A part of the motivation was was rebellion, but I think I was I was the influencer though. I was the the one that influenced the other guys to join the band and start it up and stuff. So, oh, um, okay. yeah. but of course, you know, at that age, you know, if you don't have a strong male influence guiding you, yes, and yes. help helping you to understand when you're being stupid, when you're being prideful and how mm. to hone in on your skills and, you know, not do things for the wrong reason. It's just right. not, that was me. I had nobody in my life that was like directing me and helping me go in this path. And so when I, I learned those four chords on guitar, I'm like, let's start a band. Let's just do all the drugs we can do whatever we want, you know? Wow. Um, and so yeah, it's it's hard to say, but um, yeah, I was definitely the bad influence when it came to that. So, your did your mom raise you, or did you was your dad at that point in your life? Were they divorced? Were they married? Do you mind if I ask? Yeah, they were. So, so uh, my mom raised me. My dad was uh, in my life, but back in like the eighties, like the way the courts, especially in California, were doing like custody, right. was like the dad got every other weekend. So yes. that's all, that's all I got was I got Jeez. Friday, Saturday and part of Sunday. 
um, you know, with my dad oh. twice a month. And so that was all I got. Ooh, from that's so, rough. Yeah. That's rough. And I, I just will have to, to uh, empathize with you and let you know that uh, when you don't have like two parents raising you there, there is some strengths that you have being raised by the opposite gender parent. Mm -hmm. And then you, there are some weaknesses that one would have, such as myself, not having mm -hmm. the same gender parent raising. Like, for example, uh, my, my mother died when I was 12, so I didn't have any mother. So my father raised me. So that's why I'm, I'm very comfortable talking to men, such as yourselves. <laughs> mm -hmm. And uh, and, I, and I feel like that's the reason why you're, you're, you're very comfortable around, you know, probably talking to women, at, you know, at, um, because, oh, and men too, of course, uh, because your mom raised you. And, and it's just my psychological yeah. mind spinning, you know? And uh, so anyway, I just, I just throw, I wanted to, to find you know that out if, if maybe there was somebody in your family that was also maybe had problems with those addictions, you know, drug addiction, alcohol addiction, what have you. I was just wondering if somebody in your family, like if it yeah. was from your mom or your dad, uh, but again, I didn't want you to, you know, out oh, your no, family well, or anything like that. Well, yeah. So, I mean, it, as far as like my immediate, like I think my grandfather was an alcoholic on my on my mom, or I know he was on my mom's side. Oh, um, I gotcha. uh -huh. my, but my mom and dad, I mean, my mom, she smoked cigarettes, so that was definitely gotcha. a bad influence because I started smoking right. pretty young, and that lead that leads you that le definitely leads you into trying into trying other things. But no, my my sure. mom was she was extremely she loved Jesus, you know, oh, but she awesome. never. never Never, never drank, never did drugs, but yeah. Just the smoking. Yeah, just the smoking. But definitely, like, I, I believe that there's a genetic aspect to that. Yes. But it's not something, it's not like a crutch that I would lean on, you know, especially even in at the worst part of my addiction, you know. Um, sure, was, understandable. Uh, yeah. I was just wondering, I know that there's, I think that there's a, definitely a genetic and or spiritual inheritance that we have whether good bad or neutral and that you know when we come to the lord you know that god help us helps us to work our, out our own salvation and such okay awesome and so mike if you could uh lean into uh some of the supernatural experiences both good bad or neutral you know from the lord or from the enemy or what have you uh that would be great i know that you have some pretty hair raising uh stories when uh when you were young uh I think you were talking about uh, how your mom had had uh, gotten a Ouija board into the house or what have you and, and the banging that occurred Ooh. and the creatures and stuff. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, that that's that was an uh, a, an interesting story um, that I was only able to put together looking back on it. But yeah, at one point my mom had brought a Ouija board into the house and my dad wow. was already gone out of the house. And it was my sister, um, myself, and my mom, and we were talking to the Ouija board like all night. It was just crazy. We, we were just oh. up all night doing it. Um, oh gosh. And shortly thereafter that, that we did that, um, it was in the middle of the night, and there was like this banging on our front door. And now the doors back then were made really, really strong. I mean, this was a heavy, heavy door. Wow. And um, I could remember hearing like this vicious, like growling. And this, this creature, whatever it would be, was just continually trying to break down the door. And um, my dog, you know, dogs usually are are ready to go like they'll die for you like you know what i'm saying yes, like they'll yes. they'll get and the dog was like boom scared wow. scared went into the room the dog was shaking like like seriously shaking oh my gosh Dang. and um wow my mom called the cops and i remember we're all in her she had like a like a walk-in closet my sister my, myself and my mom are in there and she calls the cops on like the cordless phone they didn't want to come out they're like, no, oh, there's, wow. you know, it's probably just a coyote, you know? And so the wow. interesting part about that was, is that the next morning when we checked the door, there was, you know, the, it, it began to break where the dead, where the deadbolt goes in, it, it oh, began to break that wood around there. And so I'm not saying like this was a supernatural cryptid that was trying to mm. break down my door. But looking back on it, that it happened shortly after the Ouija board incident, 
And the fact that like, I don't know, like I don't know about coyotes or like wild dogs. I mean, are they gonna injure themselves? I mean, are they gonna try to break down a door to the point where they're gonna injure themselves? Because it would have had to, you know what I mean? Right. So I I, I just can't, I, I can't think of a, any other creature that right. would do that, you know? And so wow. that, that was um, a crazy, crazy incident. And I remember there not too long after that, because my mom, she was Catholic. She had, she had a, a priest, a Catholic priest come out and like, do like, like exercise, quote unquote, exercise the house. I still, I still remember seeing him and thinking wow. like, like, what's he doing? You know, it didn't make sense to me. He had this like incense thing and he's just like oh, speaking well. in Latin and whatever, but wow. yeah. Yeah. Sounds like a movie. Yeah. Yes. They should have that wow. on the back of Ouija boards, you know, like <laughs> fun for the whole family. And then here's the number for the exorcist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> fun for the whole family until you get possessed. Right. <laughs> Was it the Parker brothers kind or the heavy wooden kind? You know, I don't, I, I don't remember. I'm going to assume it was just a Parker's brother one, but it was, um, it was very strong. Um, and I, and I had, um, I had gotten into the Ouija board as a, as a teenager as well. And it was always a very, very strong presence that would show up and it would get very mad. Cause I would, I would basically, you wow. know, talk, talk crap to it after a while, like saying you're lying, you know? Right. And the, the presence would get stronger and it would just like the, the force with it moving would be, would be, it almost feel like a magnetism of some sort, but you know, Wow. It's, it's, it's real stuff. <laughs> it is. Oh, definitely. Yeah. And I got into uh, Ouija boards when I was 14 and um, mm. it didn't move on its own. I know that some people have had experiences where they, they weren't even touching it and the demonic presence was so strong that it moved on its own. But I, it was me and a, a former classmate. We both had our hands on, on the planchette and I definitely felt something not here. I move it. Yeah. Uh, around and uh, it, it actually predicted something that came true and yeah demons have a finite amount of knowledge for the past and future but not you know right. until af after a person gets saved um, I don't think they have a, a right to divine after that point um, yeah. I feel like throwing this out there even though uh, this is, might be a little small rabbit trail uh, I'll go down this rabbit trail and come right back <laughs> uh, so so basically um, my best friend's aunt bobby um she used to go to an astrologer a horoscope reader, a professional astrologer and uh which is similar to divination that that would be coming from a ouija board so a lot of people don't think that but but it's true it's the same mm -hmm. spirits through those uh, the horoscopes as with the ouija board and so mm -hmm. she used to go through um this uh, this astrologer and it kept saying it kept divining her future up until age 30 so she wow. thought that age 30 she was going to to kick the bucket she thought at age 30 she was going to die and unfortunately uh, so when she became uh, a Christian at age 30, it came, the Lord showed her that the reason why the astrologer couldn't divine past age 30 was because the demons had no right to influence her life beyond that point of, of coming mm -hmm. to know Christ. So I'm like, wow, that's, I just, when she told me that, I was like, I have to share that with anybody that, that you know, uh, is interested in, in, uh, any of the, this divination stuff. Anyway, so I'm sorry, I didn't mean to, I'll, I'll bring back the rabbit to the trail here. <laughs> So, um, okay, so that was a supernatural experience. And then um, uh, tell me uh, about, um, I know that you had moved uh, from California to uh, Florida and North Carolina and such. Can you tell us about your journey, how that happened and how, you, um, I think that there was a pivotal point, I think when you were 38, I think in Florida, I know you were getting uh, really attacked spiritually a lot in Florida. So I'm like, oh my gosh, yeah, I hope that me being in Florida doesn't, doesn't remind him of this trauma or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, so yeah, I moved, um, uh, I moved to Florida from California. Um, I, I was 30. Um, yeah. And so then, then I was, I was able to get a hundred percent clean and awesome. I was, I was going to church. I had this new job and everything was looking good. Um, but then, yeah, there's so much there. So I'll, I'll just skip from that. We move, I moved to North Carolina um, 2014. And I began this job, this, this newer job, and I was making a lot of money. Eventually that job took me back to Jupiter, Florida, where I, where I moved to. And that's, that's where, you know, as a Christian, I could tell you, um, 
that sometimes people think that you don't get attacked, that you don't go through things. But I was, I was, I was so close to killing myself. Like, and, and it was just, the attack was relentless. And here's the thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Cause I was making, a, I, I was, I, I did well, I made a lot of money, but I'm, but I wasn't doing what I was supposed to be doing. Mm. I wasn't where I was supposed to be. And, and what I figured out during this time is that I kept praying, you know, I kept praying all of these prayers. Like, for example, like we all do it, but say, you know, God, if anything isn't of you, take it away from me. Like, help me to become closer to you. Right. But we, we, we sometimes don't um, calculate the cost. Right. Like yes. Paul says, I counted all his joy, but I wasn't because I, it, it literally meant that God started to take things out of my life that wasn't of him. And he started, he's, he wanted to bring me closer to him by getting these things away. So he's answering my prayers. But I'm losing my money. Um, I, I basically went from doing very, very well until all my money dwindled away. I was going to be homeless. Oh, my gosh. And um, it was just I, I could not figure out why I was going through all of this. And during those, during those times, like I was just getting attacked like so very hard in my mental, my thoughts. And I couldn't get away. I, it was like, no matter wow. what I did, I couldn't get away. And, um, you know, eventually, eventually um, a circumstance happened, um, which I won't go into, but it led me to Montana. And then things, you know, began to, to slowly get better. But yeah, we, just because you're a Christian, it doesn't mean that you can't struggle with suicide. It doesn't mean that you don't struggle with certain things. And sure, you know, when I, when, when I say like, I was close to killing myself, like, it's not that like I was holding a gun to my head, but it was that I really like in my heart, I thought that it, that the world would be better off without me. And that's oh. the lot. That's the lie that the yes. enemy, um, he starts to put in your head, you know, for a lot of these people that deal with it and yes. you, right. you, it seems so coherent. Like you're right. Like, like I began to feel like I was a liability in people's lives rather than an asset. And, you know, it just, it, it made sense. And that's really, you know, a delusion. It's like witchcraft, yes. you know, it's, it's, it's somebody putting a, it's, or something, the devil getting right. you to believe a false reality, you know? Right. Absolutely. So, like AI. It, exactly. It, 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 it's exactly the same. Right. Yeah, no, that's a great, it's a great point. Like it knew me better than I, I mean, than I knew myself and it knew how to get me to feel right. a certain way. And, you know, I think that God allowed that to happen because otherwise I don't think I would have woken up from the stupor that I was in, you know, and, you know, right. I, I wanted nothing more to serve than to serve him. But what did that look like to him versus what is right. what it looks like to me were two very, very different, different paths, you know, so. Sure. Wow. That's awesome. I'm so glad that the, that God delivered you from that, those attacking spirits of suicide and depression. I know I've also gone through that as a Christian as well. Michael B., did you have a question, Mike? No, I'm just, I'm along for the ride here right now, but um. Definitely, you've been through a lot of spiritual warfare to get to where you are now. And it's interesting to me, I just want to comment um, that to get where you are now, where you're you're doing Camp Hermon, you're dealing with all these huge subjects. And as a Christian, it's it takes a lot. It just makes me think there's a lot of there's a lot of journeying to get to this point to where you can begin to dive into this kind of thing and even help produce a podcast too. Yeah. Um, and just bravo and, and praise God that you're here, brother. Yeah. I want to, I want to hear the whole story. So, yeah. uh, I mean, where does it go though, from just coming through these battles and, and engaging with a lot of these things, a lot of people have to go through to just get clean, become full of faith and, and then to be able to get into these red pill subjects. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see that arc of the story, how you came to know, uh, Camp Herman, build it, 
with every, but really you carry it. Uh, I found a funny meme on your Facebook group, but uh, <laughs> just another shout out here, guys, that go and get Camp Herman podcast on all the podcasting platforms and on YouTube, but especially the podcasting platforms because they can't really censor those as well. And uh, and check out the brilliant work that uh, yes. Mike Stitz has done there. And they really refer to you as the giant who does everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> For sure. To remind everybody. But um, but how do you go from kind of just getting to know the Lord and and that you have some supernatural experiences, but then to be able to like swallow the bigger picture here that right. just only now people are beginning to realize is true. Exactly. So yeah, I mean that great great question. Um, you know, I think a lot of people, I think a lot of people within this, you know, within this realm, this industry, this space of you know fringe, you know, can benefit from from hearing from hearing this side of it. But yeah, so basically I, I went through all of that that I was telling you. So I'm, here I am, I'm 38. Um, I'm in Montana. I don't have a job, um, but I'm being taken care of. Like I'm well taken, I'm definitely well taken care of at the time. And so I had, I was staying with a, with a friend and um, I had my own room and I basically was just praying. I just pray, 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 pray. And then it was kind of interesting. Like, I felt like, you know, I was having a conversation with Holy Spirit, you know, you know how you do when you pray and you just, yeah. you feel his presence, you know, you can't really explain it if you haven't, if someone hasn't experienced it, but I know you guys have. So I'm sitting yes. there, I'm having a conversation and I just felt like, I felt like Holy Spirit asked me a question, like, what do you want to do? And I thought to myself, and this is no joke, I thought to myself, like, I would love to edit movies and videos. Right. Awesome. And I, I, I don't even know why I answered that way because it was contrary to everything my, that I chased my entire life, you know, but it was like, um, you know, I could clearly see how to put together a story and how to make stuff, you know, interesting. I mean, it's, it's very difficult to do that. It's a very long process to get even to where I'm at now, but I'm still not there. Trust me when I say that we're, it's always, it's always a journey. But so, so from there, I ended up getting a job working for a company that needed um, a, like a media person. Right. And so I, I didn't know anything about Instagram, Facebook. I never even had accounts until just the past couple of years, but okay. um, I, I took the job and um, little by little, I just started learning stuff. And then I, and then I ended up editing um, a Christian television show. And then I ended up cool. uh, producing, awesome. producing and writing the Christian television show and then, wow. so, th so that was where detox Babylon came from is like, all of a sudden I was like, Hey, you know, I've got these ideas, you know, like these spiritual warfare ideas. And if I make, you know, some short videos, I'll just start a YouTube channel. Like, and that was how detox Babylon was born is I just started hmm. releasing videos. Like they, none of, they, there was no structure to them. They were all different. Sometimes it was a podcast. Sometimes it was a documentary style. Sometimes it was a teaching or like a sermon type of deal. And so whatever came to me, I just started making videos. I wasn't even looking for subscribers or to even, you know, be guests on podcasts. I was just, just got addicted to making these videos, you know? And then so eventually Detox Babylon turned into another idea, which I was going to do a docu-series called Project Revelation. But it's very, very difficult to do a docu-series when you're the only character in it, you know, because that's all right. I had was just me because I didn't even really know anybody. Um, and um, so I started Project Revelation and then it just it just became an echo of detox Babylon where I was just doing whatever I felt at the time. Okay. Cool. So awesome. now, now we're getting into camp Hermon. So yeah, the camp Hermon thing was, it's not even that I really joined camp Hermon. I was always right there basically from the inception of it, but I just wouldn't dedicate myself to them. Okay. Um, but the idea now I know this isn't, you know, Go, this is the arc of the story, right? And so my story, I'm still, we're still in the middle of this because we still don't know what's going to happen. But with Tori and Chris, what I figured out was 
is that two people, they, they proved themselves over six months that this is who they are. It's not just something that they're putting on. Right. Yes. And so a lot of people, a lot of people in the entertainment industry or that want to be in this type of industry, it's not who they are. They're not naturally doing it. You know, they're not doing it. Um, it's not, a, it's not an extension of who they are. They're trying to put it on like it's a mask. Right. Yes. And so they proved themselves to me. And like, I was like, okay, dude, we're going to do this. You guys handle the podcast. I'll help direct the direction, but then we're going to do a docu-series. We're going to do what I was always wanting to do. Cool. That's awesome. So, so with them, you know, I can, I can, I don't have to worry about getting together a podcast or getting together a video every, you know, every couple of weeks or so is I could write, I could direct and I could edit a docu-series while they're out there you know, kind of like, you know, throwing the net and trying to get people to come in. And so we haven't seen that yet. We haven't realized the docuseries quite yet, but we're working on it. We hope to have okay. like the first three episodes done by, by Christmas. That's and, awesome. um, and, and I don't know. So if you're hearing this, you're, you're kind of just hearing the story of maybe where it's going to go. But I do believe the, the, the docu-series is, is still going to be Project Revelation, the title of it. Um, it'll be Camp Hermann's Project Revelation. And, and basically what that's going to be, my goal is it to be an investig, and this could be a segue into our next conversations here, but an investigative series that will take on some of the weird topics within the Christian realm. and an almost exhaustively research the different points of views and then then hopefully to find out which one which point of view or which teaching or which theory has the most biblical coherence wow. behind it because there's you know there's there's a lot of stuff that's weird like yes. if i just like i was listening to um um a famous youtuber the other day uh ruslan Yes. And he said something. Him. He said something and it made me laugh, right? Like it made me laugh because I remember like he was bashing flat earthers, which is okay. If you're a flat earther, <laughs> I, I, I love hey. you. Hey, just kidding. I'm not a flat earther. <laughs> uh, no, none of us are. It, it, didn't, it, it didn't make me mad, but he was talking. He said something. He goes, Why does there have to be lizard people? <laughs> and I'm thinking to myself, I, I thought to myself, because he was talking about conspiracies with like the Jim Caviezel thing and adrenochrome. And I was, and I was just like, brother, some are just further down the rabbit hole than you are. Yes. In, in wow. five years from now, if you look, if you literally look into those theories, yes, you're going to find some coherence there. You just, you're just not that far down the rabbit right. hole. And right. so, he's, right. he's, so he's bashing all these people that believe like wizard people. That sounds crazy if you don't have the <laughs> prerequisite yes. of like all of Mike Kaiser's stuff, you know, right. and understanding even this, just understanding what Jesus said when he said that it's going to be kingdom against kingdom and nation right. against nation. Like that, like when he says it's kingdom against kingdom, it's bloodline against bloodline. There are Man. these royal bloodlines that are fighting for the demonic control. And yes. you, I mean, you could, you could deny it all day long, but once you look into it, it will make you a believer. And that's what I see. I see a lot of, a lot of people that are in this fringe space and they talk about some weird stuff, but we've got to lay out, we've got to lay it out to the people that don't understand that don't have the prerequisite. Cause then we're right. just going to, we're going to sound absolutely crazy because I yes. pretty much, pretty much right now, the past like couple months, I've been exclusively on the disclosure um, talk because it's just so huge right now. And you look into disclosure and things that we were saying in the Christian space 10 years ago, 15 years ago in the fringe space, because I've been there all along, 
they're coming, they're coming to pass and the agendas are mm. coming to play. And so, yeah, it, it's, it's a hard space to be in because we were, it sounds like we're talking about Star Trek stuff, but yeah, it's, it, there's so much craziness, but yeah, Ruslan, yes. I know you're not listening to this, but let me just say it one more time. <laughs> you're just not that far down the rabbit hole yet. You'll get there, buddy. I agree. Uh, I follow, I've been following Ruslan for a, a few months or several months and um, I s support what he does and everything like that. And uh, first of all, I, uh, well, second of all, uh, I, I wanted to say that your video production skills are out of this world and, and you really know what you're doing, buddy, uh, when it comes to uh, documentary and video production. It's, you know, it's funny because like, I'll, I've done video production as you can, as you know, but it's definitely not as tight as yours. Like you, you, you will have, Michael, I don't know if you've seen any of, of Project Revelation or Detox Babylon or Camp Perman stuff lately that Mike Sibbs has been uh, producing, but he'll have a, an image in like every second or every few seconds, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, I think that it, it would take like you know, a week to do like 10 minutes. And that's, a, that's exactly what uh, Mike had said uh, in Very another perfect. podcast before. Phenomenal. Yes, it's it's you're doing an excellent job, friend. Uh, really, really, really great uh, video production skills and self taught too. And and like for me, like because I work full time and I, I barely have enough time to do uh, the Strange O'Clock podcast. You know, oh, you do uh, a great job, Jerilyn. Come oh, on, with no, the amount no, of time you put into it, and still, it's like it looks like you put a lot more time into it. But we, oh, thank you. We definitely I, need uh, you guys to make us look good. Some of us are just running around, you know, looking crazy, and then it's like, wait, this is professional. <laughs> Professional quality. Oh my <laughs> gosh. It makes the truth not necessarily just for one person's thing, but just in general, like it's worshiping God yeah. to yes, bring the amen. truth out there and to present it. And it says to play it skillfully at the instruments. You know, the Bible amen. times they didn't have movies or videos or anything like this, but now we do. And to do it, to do a good job with it skillfully yes. it is certainly worshiping God, in my opinion. Oh, so totally. Bravo for sure. to both of you. Creators. Oh, thank you. Well, if you think I'm great, Michael B, with my any you know my very basic video production skills, Mike Stibbs is is a hundred times better. And uh, so, everybody listening or watching, go to uh, Camp Herman on uh, YouTube and check out his videos. Or if you type in Project Revelation, it'll still go to to Mike's uh, videos and what have you. So, what's neat is that all of the Camp Herman uh, podcasts are also uh, in video form on YouTube as well as spotify and apple podcast and, and, and detox babylon i finally found yes. detox with an x detox mm -hmm. d-e-t-o-x babylon um mike are you going to continue that podcast i noticed you stopped in um august of two yeah, years ago I, so i just i wasn't really a podcaster so much um you know i i i found i found myself getting to the point where it's like, I, I need, I, I couldn't convey exactly what was in my head. Cause I had, I had like these super complicated, um, you know, trains of thought. So I just, I kind of decided like, okay, I'm just going to start, I'm going to try to do exclusively documentary type of stuff for, for the stuff I was going to podcast on. And that's kind of how it just, it, it's just, um, I don't know, it evolved or some would say it devolved because I don't put out a lot of content um, because I spend so much time on it. And then I started doing um, a five-part series on the West Memphis Three, um, which is which is on Project Revelation uh, YouTube. YouTube, you type that and you'll find it. And so that took the past year. So I just couldn't do it all. Like, cause I do, I work, sure. I work full time, got the family um, and I'll, I'll come on a podcast, but like for me, like when I, when I'm like setting up a podcast, you just see like the outlines, bro. It's like, cause I just like, you know how it is. Like there's so many different connections here and there. And I just get crazy about like, you don't, we don't have to be that way. We don't That's have right, to right. get every detail in every single podcast. Right. But it was yes, just the right. way I think. And, you know, I, I want to, I always like dreamed of you know, I have this like build my case, like I'm a lawyer. And then like mm. my closing argument, you know, is like just a home run. And I just yes. couldn't, I couldn't do that within the podcast realm. So that's where, where Camp Herman came in. Cause I was like, you guys could do the podcasting. Cause we need it. We, the, every, the Christian realm needs the podcast. 
I'll take care of the docu series. We'll collab. We'll see how you know God uses it. You know, and so far, so far, so good. So it's awesome. not, it's, it's not even like it changed. It's just, like I said, it's still Project Revelation. It's just going to be cool. Camp Hermon would be like the vessel, the platform. So. I really applaud uh, Chris and Tori and you for co- uh, collaborating together. I think Enoch Putris is also with you guys, right? He 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 was for a period of time. Um, he was doing he was uh he was doing the podcast editing. He was doing doing a great job. But yes. um, but yeah, he's no longer he's no longer with the Camp Hermon crew. He's he's moved on to doing some other things. And so I Chris, think- Chris is the podcast editor now. I do oh. like oh. the smaller, I do the short videos and I'll put in um, you know, I'll, I'll I just go through and clean up the sound because um gotcha. but yeah, um, but yeah, good, good, good stuff. I love having a, a couple of people to work with. It's it changes the whole thing. That's awesome. Uh, Mike, so you mentioned to segue into some of these uh, kind of weird or strange sort of philosophies or or beliefs that people have in the Christian realm. So for those who are, I guess, mainstream Christians and, you know, just haven't really heard a lot of the weird stuff (laughs) and and you're probably thinking what are they talking about so i remember when i became quote red pilled and what red pilled means is that you kind of believe in these fringe topics Mm -hmm. that kind of um are are like a subset like a small circle within the large circle of christianity so this small circle is what we call the red pilled christian movement or fringe christian movement Mm -hmm. and and a lot of it has to do with uh believing in genesis 6 that that the sons of god had with the daughters of uh, men and and bore children, giants, and and the and when the giants died, they became demons, and that totally is not what mainstream you know seminaries or Christian churches teach and what have you. So I would say that's like one of the number one things. Uh, so Mike, what would you say? Um, maybe the top five things that you've heard that would be red pilled or controversial or stuff you want to talk about or whatever. Yeah. So the the first one that I will mention. Um, and it's the most complicated topic because I've been researching it pretty much my whole life. But the alien UFO topic in yes. general, um, you know, I I am still I'm surprised to this day. Like, like I get it. Like we're like all the fringe people, we're talking about it. We understand it. We can have conversations and even arguments about it, right? Right. But like, where's Joel Osteen when it comes to the aliens? You're not talking about aliens. You have a huge platform. Where are these dudes? Why are they not talking about it? At least saying that it's a deception right. and you need to beware that there's a deception taking over the planet right now. Um, it, it, it baffles me that this isn't the number one topic that mainstream christianity is talking about and i think i think in my opinion that it's a testament it's evidence to show you that the american mega church culture is definitely it's definitely a false movement because here you have unfolding in front of you now whether it and it's debatable whether what these things are or who's flying them we could talk about that all day long but here you have the biggest paradigm shifting global conversation happening and mainstream christianity still wants still wants you to give a hundred dollars so you can get a thousand back you know it's confusing like oh isn't this about like building a kingdom and being a warrior and watching and praying and understand what's coming and knowing that when you're a christian you're not just sitting on the couch watching tv you are now an active participant in this let's say war like it's a war you are an, you are an active participant rather than a passive you know, um, part, uh, passive, you know, uh, whatever the word is, uh, a passive observer, spectator, spectator, spectator. you know, you, you have, love that. you have a weapon to yield yeah. and there's, there's lives at stake. And yet we're still talking about the peripheral 
financial stuff, which has its place. But come on, come on, man. My goal, my goal is to get the get this to the mainstream, like get Michael Heiser stuff Amen. to the mainstream, connecting it with current events and having somebody that can have that voice in the mainstream and be able to represent the, the fringe stuff, you know, in a coherent manner. I don't know if I, I, I'm probably not the guy. Maybe God's going to bring that person across my path and I can, I could edit videos and help that guy. But there's somebody who can stand up to Joe Rogan. Right. And it would have been Heiser. I would have loved to have seen Heiser on the Joe Rogan podcast, but somebody has got to stand up and sit there with Joe Rogan and be able to talk about fringe Christianity and bring it to the people because there you, go. you know how many people would be red pilled if you could do it, if you, if somebody that was coherent right. could do it. And if somebody who understands how like the, the Joe Rogan type of guy, pot smoker, just bro, how they think and be able to All speak right. their language, man. It's like, oh. right. Okay, fine, Mike. I'll go on Joe Rogan's podcast and I'll bring fringe Christianity to <laughs> Go kidding. for it, man. No, seriously, we it. should all, I mean, it could be any of us. You know, we're all like the aliens in Toy Story. Like, choose me, like the con. <laughs> like one of, uh, one of these days, one of us is going to get on there yeah. and blow up that show with Mike Heiser, everything. And believe it or not, believe it or not, it's already, we're already making that connection and i think this conversation right now what you're saying right now needs to be like a whole series because we need to just triangulate and strategize like how do we get this material into the mainstream and of course it's going to be presented well like you're doing an awesome job um to so that when it does meet that big movie producer it's it hits home and i think it already is i think that hollywood is collapsing as you see in the news every day Yes. And that this stuff, like it's reality and it's been hidden in plain sight. And it's it's what we need to be talking about, what the alien thing actually is. How well, how do we deal with it as Christians? Yeah. On my side yes. of the family, Don Basham and Derek Prince stuff, it's like, you know, spiritual warfare. What do you do when aliens are in the room with you? And how do you pray against them? And yes, that that aspect of things. So yeah, I want you to continue, but you're just you're just touching heartstrings in my soul right now, brother. So it's good to be uh, yeah. collaborating with you guys. Yeah, it's um, yeah, like you know, I'm just gonna just speak from from just my heart right now. But Please. like you know, like there, I I really feel that the next you know, and we call it revival, right? We're always, and that's just talking in the old Christian lingo. But we're always we're 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 waiting for like this end times revival, okay? And if you look at everything that's going on, just every you right. you say everything that's going on, whatever pops up in your head, boom, there it is. You know the world has is a different place right now. Is you think that what's going to win people's win people over to the kingdom of God? It's right. this real world application of what Christ came to teach us. And Amen. we, we, we often, Amen. I think like in the aggregate, we've, we've kind of taken the message of Jesus and we've kind of made it like a little bit trivial, trivial, right? Like, right. Oh, you need, you need to go, you need to go down to the river and get baptized in the Holy ghost. Right? No. <laughs> no That's I mean, a pretty good yes. accent. Yes, but this is not what Christianity used is. to live in North Carolina. You know? yeah. <laughs> so Christianity isn't, it's not church. It's not about, right. it's not about this stuff. It, it, there's, there's, there's a war, a spiritual mm. war that is about to spill over into the natural. And where mm. are you? And I think, I think a lot of people are waking up to that. And it is the Mike Heiser coherent type of stuff. Um, that when people listen to it, they're like, you know, that makes a lot of sense. Like the divine exactly. counsel, if yeah. you if you look at the alien topic and filter it through the divine counsel, it starts to make a lot of sense. You know, maybe right. maybe that connection isn't happening yet, but eventually it will. 
there will be entities that are thrown to the earth. Clear right. Bible clearly says that, you know, so what, right. how, you know, or coming from underneath the earth, Mike, you yes, know, there's uh, Steve Quayle just posted today. I hadn't seen this and I lived in Japan for a long time and studied Japanese and big, big Japan nerd here. But there's uh <laughs> apparently there's a boulder that um, cracked open in Japan. That was like this magical Shinto boulder that, supposedly has imprisoned a demon for a thousand years and so now the japanese are all spooked this happened last year i read year. that oh you so you heard about that it's the yes, sexual siki the killing stone and i mean these myth these ancient myths were like oh whatever it's a myth well enter camp herman podcast and your guys's phenomenal work and the whole you know the michael heiser worldview and we might actually see these ancient fox demons from japan showing up and <laughs> you know uh the nine-tailed beautiful demoness that just came out of imprisonment for a thousand years like anybody <laughs> else want to deal with that like anybody know how to pray against that thing so um <laughs> yeah i mean i'm just when you're talking like my brain is firing off all this stuff and i'm trying to shut up but yeah no the, uh, no that's 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 great stuff because yeah like you said you it's like we often will think like you know like we call it like Greek or Roman mythology, Greco-Roman mythology. To them, it wa it wasn't myth. Like that was yes. their religion, right. and it just right. happens to perfectly connect into divine counsel type of thinking, just from a different perspective. You know of who sure. of who the the god of the gods actually is, and so that's awesome. yeah, it's crazy stuff it's the fallen it's the fallen angels it's and then and then in heaven we also by the way i feel like we always focus on the demonic what i love about the whole divine council idea is that there's a divine council like we've got a lot of good good guys on our side and um sure around here we see all this demonic stuff but the vision that is brought forward Talk a little bit about I, i'm always wondering what camp herman because i always think uh you know reversing herman you know, yeah. Herman. and obviously people don't know the, the the place where the fallen angels came down was mount Hermon during the book of enoch's time so uh, how what about just the name there like yeah. just tell us because i'm still new to your shows like i'm kind of just catching yeah. up like geraldine's been pulling me into this and i'm just like okay <laughs> i'm trying to catch up you know but uh for other people and then i, I want to look at some of the latest shows too yeah. Uh, Christian cults, Doug mostly, and you guys have had all the like the the a few good men list of Derek Gilbert and uh, Doug Hamp, and I want to kind of touch on those guys because I've been listening to them for decades. Yeah, but um, just talk about Hermon. Like, what about Camp Hermon? Why on earth would you ever want to camp out at Mount yeah. Hermon? <laughs> you know, it's so it's so funny because like you know, do, I mean, make like making videos and. Uh, podcasting, whatever, whatever we're doing, right? Like it's all about communication, right? Like we're communicating an idea towards people. And sometimes we're, you know, we miss that communication. And like, to us, it makes sense. But to the other people that are listening, it may not make sense. And it occurred to me because somebody commented on one of the podcasts, which I wasn't, I wasn't even on the podcast, but their, their comment was, I am saying no to camp falling, fallen angels. Right. Like I'm oh. like, they're like basically saying like, screw you guys. Oh. You're, you're, you're camp fallen angels. And I, th I thought to myself, well, that's kind of mean was, was kind of mean, but then, but then I started thinking, oh, well, maybe we didn't communicate what Camp Permon was all about. And we didn't, we didn't. So I'm going to make a video on that to communicate that because yeah, like, like, like you said, Michael, who wants to camp out at Camp Permon, right? But camp, but, but Mount Hermon was the place where Jesus declared that the gates of hell would not stand against him, right? Yeah. right. Peter had the revelation or spoke the revelation that Jesus was the Messiah, um, right there um, by Camp, Her but by Mount Hermon. Don't let me say Camp Hermon, but, <laughs> but you know, it's even there when they climbed up and Jesus transfigured in front of you know Peter and John and saw Moses and Elijah. That was on Mount Hermon. 
and they wanted to build a tent. And Jesus was like, no, you don't even understand what's going on right here. But wow. Camp Hermon is, is the place where we're going to camp out. And we're going to wait for these demons to come through and we're going to, we're, we're going to fight against them. And so, yeah. Okay. Not really, but Camp Hermon is the place where we're aligning ourselves with the mission of Jesus, the great commission to, to, to take authority over this realm that we don't quite understand the spiritual realm, the unseen realm, as Michael Heiser would put it. But yet, even though we don't quite understand it exactly, we still have authority over it because who understands it? Jesus understands it. We're his followers. So that's why Camp Hermon is that that's the origin point of where pretty much every weird anomalous phenomenon can be traced to is boom, Mount Hermon. So we're camping there. We're with Jesus and we're go We're going to take our swords and fight. That's a great explanation. Oh, uh, you know, honestly, I didn't know anything about Mount Hermon or anything until uh, my friend Paul had said, oh, you've got to read this book by Dr. Heiser and about um, reversing Hermon. And uh, well, for many months, I would say her reversing Herman, but it's actually Hermon. <laughs> uh, her Herman is is like the first name of Herman Munster. <laughs> but it's actually Herm Hermon. <laughs> and, uh, Camp Herman. No, that's a little Camp bit Herman. different. <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> Um, <laughs> yeah, and I, th I think it's an awesome name of a podcast, and and um, it is. I'm, I'm happy. It's to very see... thought provoking. I mean, that's the thing. You're really thinking about the name, you know. And hey, Derek Gilbert complimented Strange O'Clock too. So hats off to Darylin for thinking of a really cool name. But oh, I just you. it makes Appreciate it opens it. up so many things because you guys are a relatively new podcast, and you're interviewing all the people from the last few decades dealing with the Michael Heiser material, and you've really been an example for us too in many ways. And I feel like we're kind of creating this community of people that are camping around, you know, the Derek. <laughs> like, I think we should all, I mean, if you don't have an app, we don't have an app. Let's all go download the Gilbert house app. I'm on there. My phone is like covered with, there's so much going on in those chat rooms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's start engaging with each other and creating these, the, our, our smaller, but growing um, kind of, communities and and then go on on the camp Hermon podcast facebook page as well and uh but i think we should it's really cool when you see somebody like the gilberts go and build their own app and build their own yes you know like an actual prayer meetup group chat on something that has nothing to do with big tech like that is so cool which means we're really i think we're making progress we're breaking through and it's because of guys like you and what you're doing and being willing to lay aside your own podcast which people can still listen to all those episodes and I can't wait to hear them detox Babylon and get into your mind a little bit. And just, I'm sure you're very humble and not saying how cool your, your own, I'm, I love listening <laughs> to you. So, um, me too, but it's that my grandfather used to say, it's the, the greater honor is to lay down your own ministry to support other people's ministries, um, which is how Derek Prince ministries got so big. It's mostly Basham's working for it, but with what I think what, what we're doing here is we're going to see a bigger fringe Christian movement due to the love of the brethren laying down their lives for each other. And the world will take notice and be like, Oh my gosh, that's real Christianity. I want to be a part of that. So I, I love that. Yeah. Cause you know, ultimately um, what I could say just kind of like on the, the bummer side of things is being, you know, putting yourself out there and you guys are probably familiar with it. As you do, you'll get, and I know it was like, you posted that thing the other day, Jerry, with the, what you see, and then what actually goes into it of, of yes. all work. Yes. And it's like, I, like, I remember one time I did a video and I'm talking, like, it took me a month of just research alone. And then someone commented like, eh, that was pretty good. And I'm like, thinking to myself, pretty good. You know, I worked like so hard on this thing, but yeah. At the end of the day, there's there's a difference between a consumer and the person that's producing that product. Yes. Like they don't, it it doesn't, it really doesn't matter to the consumer what went into that. They just want something good at the end of the day, right? And so, but being in this, being in this, in 
on the outskirts in the shadows of Christian television for a few years and then being, you know, putting yourself out there is you're going to take on criticism. People are going to call you names. People are going to, are going to say bad things, but going to yes. say certain negative things. It's just part of, of the game. Okay. Right. Yes. But, but when you, when you're talking about that, Michael, you know, I, I literally think that it would be a great thing if we could all collab and and have a Netflix, you know, of of have a professional platform that could be videos, podcasts, news, news stuff, and have you know somebody be directing the direction of it, and then right. making sure it's it's all looking good, it's all coherent, sure. and 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 charging for it, you know, and having the the rock stars of the fringe world there but you 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 learn real quick that most of us and it's hard i mean i'm and i don't blame anybody but it does become about my it's this is my ministry this exactly. is my calling and i just wonder how you know for netflix and hulu and all these different platforms to be you know, multi-billion dollar companies that influence every single human on the planet, hmm. right? Right. There, there, there's a unity there. And we don't, and we can't figure that out in the Christian realm. And I'm, I'm just as guilty as anybody else, but I pray for that. Man, right. if I could, mm -hmm. if I could get, if I could get Steve Quayle, you know, and just take his mind his brain, all of his research and, and be able to produce content around that. And then to have like Tom Horn stuff and all this and have them all in like one nice place. And then everybody can make money off of it. I don't know. That's, that's the type of things that I'm thinking about because it's important. It's, it's important stuff. And I'm not, I'm not saying that, you know, it's anybody's fault, you know, because right. it's not, it's, it's the collection of us together um, of whoever somebody's called to that, some there's a billionaire out there who's probably called to 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 be the financial backer of something like that. And are we just not listening to God? I don't know. I, I'm just asking the question, you know. But that's what I see. I really, really hope that one day we do figure that out and we can contend with you know big tech and we could just take yes. the narrative back because I do think that, like I said, I think that that's where I think revival is in the hands of the fringe community right now. Absolutely. Wow. Mike, when you were talking about that a few months ago oh, praise before, God. praise God, absolutely. Uh, Mike, when you were talking, I thought of a few months ago, I actually wanted to create a network on um, this particular platform. And I was going to invite you and Chris and Tori and all, all these Christian podcasts and video documentary people and what have you on, onto there. And I was going to make a network so it would be a channel on Roku. But and then my husband became ill and that mm -hmm. went by the wayside and everything. But that's still the back burner of my mind. I know that uh, Johnny uh, McMahon, uh, he created the Fringe Radio Network and there uh, are some heavy hitters on there, including the Gilberts and uh, different people on there. And uh, that's just, you know, listening, podcasting, but what, it would be great to have something visual, you know, a video and audio, you know, on like some, like a Christian Netflix. Um, I know that uh, there are some uh, Christian channels on Roku and, and these different platforms mm -hmm. and what have you. And I think that would be great for us to all collaborate and unify together instead of maybe the competition that some people have, you know, like, oh, you know, like, oh, this is, like you said, you know, my calling, my my podcast, you know, versus their podcast. I mean, we should all be promoting each other's stuff and all unifying together. Uh, so I know that the enemy wants to, to, uh, counterfeit that and make his Can own. I, I want to say something, Geraldine. You're saying all brilliant things, but my brain's exploding because Explode of what you're saying, us. what Mike just said. Because <laughs> um, if I can just speak for the Fringe Radio Network as someone that Johnny literally had me join, and something I did or said, or some people that I had on pissed off somebody enough to like blow off and leave with L.A. Marzuli back in 2016 when I was a nobody, and Johnny kept me and. I'm like, what is this? And I found out how loyal Johnny McMahon, the Iron Show Johnny, is. He's like, no, I'm going to keep Michael. And so I got to do this show, Spirit Wars, and interview all these cool people. And then life got crazy. 
But I noticed throughout the years that um, the Fringe Radio Network has really been what I've been able to bring besides rambling all day and some good guests is like Sarah Westall and Edge Radio and a bunch of other shows that I've liked. And I would interview somebody there and then be like, hey, do you want to join the network? And then ask Johnny, ask them like, yes, yes. Okay. Then we have their feed on the network. And thanks to Daniel X for ministry X podcast for handling all that recently. Basically the fringe radio network is dozens and dozens of different podcasts that have their own, whatever, Patreons, websites, feeds, RSS feeds, but we have permission to just kind of put them onto one podcast feed, the fringe radio network. Love that. And we just make, I think it's like a few hundred dollars a month advertising. It's almost nothing, but, but the agreement is to just have that all like on a unified feed. So you can just subscribe to one podcast feed and then get that stuff. And then you obviously you'll want to wink, wink camp out on <laughs> one of those. And you'll probably go and join, you know, this or that show and just want to follow their stuff. But I think the Fringe Radio Network is really already attempting to do on a smaller scale, but it could get a lot bigger. And we need bigger people with bigger ideas to like implement that video wise. But I think that's that's really where we're going to see a lot. I feel like the Holy Spirit is moving us out of competing. Like, of course, we have our own property, but we might want to pay for a church building where we can congregate, you know, online. So this yeah, idea you know, is still formulating. We'll see how yeah. it how it all works out. But. Well, and you know, and you know, the thing is too, like if we want, you know, and I, I love this, you know, and I love what what fringe radio network is doing. I love the unification of that. And the way that I would want to challenge um every Christian to think, right? Instead of thinking that you can accomplish a huge goal in your lifetime, right? right? Why don't we think a little bit different? Why don't we set the foundation that the future generation can build upon, right? And so you look at, if you look at Hollywood and that whole structure, Hollywood right. wouldn't be what it is without people, the business people figuring things out and mm. boom, 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 it evolves into what it is today. And so yeah. it's a big ask to for for unification, you know. Mm. And I get that. Like, and, and, like I just think as a consumer, like I look at that and I'm like, man, I want more Steve Quayle. I want more Tom Horn. I want to see Derek. I want it more of Derek Gilbert stuff on video. Like, I want mm. this to be in video content, you know. Awesome. So, so what I'm thinking is maybe if we can change the way that we think a little bit and just and think about it for the next generation, and are mm. there steps that I could take today that would help to start building that industry? Like in 50, mm. 60, 70 to 100 years, I mean, it could be an industry that, you know, is, is very... Um, I don't know, very, like that would that wouldn't necessarily compete, but it could contend with the narrative, and it could help bring yes. back the Christian narrative, you know, to the to a, a, a mass of people that that think Christianity is boring, you know. And I imagine this too. Like I would think, dude, wouldn't it be so cool if we could make the real passion of the Christ that isn't just you know a movie about Jesus getting beat up, which is a beautiful movie, but could we tell the, the, the behind the scenes spiritual warfare and the origin, the origin story of why he ended up on this planet? Because it wasn't, it wasn't necessarily the way that the narrative of the mainstream church is saying it, you know, going back into like reversing Herman, you know, he's, he's reversing the effects of what right. the fallen angels did. And it's and it's yes. a huge price to pay. I mean, if we could mm. tell that story of Jesus, and like we Amen. say that we say things like this, oh, well, you know, preaching the gospel, like it's a it's it, it brings a connotation to your head. Like, what does that mean? You Jesus died for your sins. Well, yes, but when you're saying I'm preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, it's saying this that Jesus is the name above all Amen. of these other names. Now you Hallelujah. think to yourself, 
You can think to yourself, well, you know, Jesus is the King of Kings. He's the name above all names. Well, who are all the other names that are below him? Yes. Amen. Right. They're entities. They're real creatures, real beings. And the Bible is not saying that flippantly to make a, to make a point that Jesus is in charge. It's making a point that saying he earned that spot. Like he only had the spot because they were all created through him and by him and for him, but yet he still came to the earth to earn that spot. And that's just, it's a different, it's a different gospel. And I, I just wonder if we could tell that story as a Our, French community yeah. and have like, you know, a Marvel movie have like, that would be awesome. Yeah, man, that would be, that would be so dope. You know what I mean? Like it would be, it would, Hallelujah. so mm. many people would get saved if they saw that movie and it came from, you know, somebody, if somebody biblical like Mike Kaiser was able to oversee the story of Mm. it and make sure that those references get in there i don't know man like that's just it's a pipe dream but how fun would that be if we could just have like this big fringe round table and we all have you know a say we all have something to contribute and that's kind of what i see which is happening now because 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 this all of this stuff you know it's more of a conversation and I, and I tell Tori and Chris this all the time. I say, look, yeah. we, we're not here to teach, okay? Because I might present a possibility that isn't biblical. And I want to make sure I'm cool with God. And so I'm going to mm. tell you it's a possibility. But here's my evidence, right? And so all yeah. of this stuff, it's, it's more of a conversation than it is like we're teaching and that's what I like about this stuff because we can speculate. We should speculate. We live in weird, dark, perverted times. That's right. And we should be making these connections, you know? Yeah. Amen. So, amen. Powerful. Woo. Woo. That's ah. awesome. It's just I, like I a round agree. table of warriors. And you have my yes. bow and my axe. And my sword. <laughs> It's like Lord of the Rings, baby. Every day, yeah. whenever I meet people like you that are like really doing it, that see the vision, it's like, oh my gosh, we need to assemble around the Council of Elrond. You know, <laughs> and the yeah. mission is not just some <laughs> fantasy thing. It's like, guys, look outside. They're shutting down the food supply. They're yeah. announcing Babylon everywhere. There's, I mean, these big shows like Redacted just did a, just a few hours ago. We just released this so-called alien interrogation video, which is so fake looking to me, but that's a huge alternative media platform. Hmm. And so it's going to bring this whole false flag alien invasion thing into the light. Yeah. Um, we need to be talking about this. And and as much as we need to fund our work and get donations and please everybody go to Camp Herman podcast and and donate and, and subscribe and all the things and and us and ever all the things but at the same time like this is not we're not here to make money is necessarily like nobody does this to make money oh. <laughs> like you're not gonna, this <laughs> right. is a suicide mission this is how people go to jail and get sued and <laughs> their lives get destroyed doing this kind of stuff so <laughs> but above all pray for us Amen. but we do need to keep i think we need to stay in touch with camp Herman. yes as the fringe radio network and and strange o'clock podcast goes forward we're obviously we have a lot of the same vision. So tell us a little bit about um, what, uh, and you can comment on anything I just said, but what, what is it like working behind the scenes? Like what do you guys do to get these shows out? And what's kind of the, cause there's so many fun looking camping trips quote, you know, uh, on the Facebook, I see you guys going to like crazy caves and fun <laughs> meme art. And it just, it feels like you guys actually have a fun community going already. What is it like working on the podcast with with, with everybody, you know, I, I love it, you know, because for so long I was just like in my hole, my, my man cave, just editing (laughs) videos, you know, for so many hours in the day. And just, it's just me. And that's kind of where I was just working out, working out my abilities and, and trying to get better and whatnot. And still that that's still going on, but yeah, it's really, it's really cool because I have, I have two people um, you know, not just two people. I've got other people in my lives too, but that can tell me, Mike, this sucks. Um, and we need to, you need to go back and, and we, you need to rethink it, you know, because okay. it's, when it was just you, 
you know, but yeah, no, it's, it's really cool. Especially like the, like the vision that we're, that we're working on right now is just to do this docu-series, you know, um, we were, we want to bring in the fringe community in on this, you know, awesome. um, sure. cause it's not going to be just us three. We, mm. we will need like you guys to come in on an episode. We'll need, you know, Derek Gilbert to come in. We've got some stuff already lined up, but it's, it's going to, like I said, investigative. So we need to make sure we look at all of the different angles that everybody gets a, that everybody gets a say on it right. it's, and it's not teaching right like right. like like if we do bring up serpent seed it's not a teaching against serpent seed it would just be the serpent seed under a microscope like does this really hold up um, there you go and then let holy spirit kind of work through those conversations but yeah i i like it i i mean i i love it i'm glad to have people around me doing it because i've been alone for so long so yeah it's it's awesome well, I'm really blessed that that we as podcasters and Christian content creators are collaborating and unifying together because just like you, Mike and Michael, uh, that I had been podcasting you know by myself for many years before I, in I invited Michael Basham to be part of the Strange O'Clock podcast. Um, I, I started podcasting in 2015, um, and then I was with Paratruth Radio for like six months, and I was also uh, uh, had a deception detection radio with Kay and Jerry uh, for uh, like three months. But besides that, it was just me, myself, and I, mm -hmm. and the Holy Spirit, <laughs> and that's about it. And it's not it, easy. It's pretty lonely. And and so I thought to myself, okay, self, do I want to just do this by myself for the rest of my time here on earth? Or do I want to connect with others? And that's when I invited you all into the Christian podcast group. And um, so we're, I've, I've been really blessed by um, the fellowship that we've had online as well as in person. You know, I've met Michael Basham and I hope to meet you one day, um, I guess. And uh you know, and it's funny, while we were both were talking, I had this vision in my head of this uh, narrated documentary. Um, I know the Fall Brothers um, made something similar to that about the hollow earth. And it was it was different speakers, um, like Ellie Marzulli. And I, I believe that, um, I think that uh, Josh Peck and a, a bunch of different great people were on there and just talking about their uh, investigations regarding the hollow earth from a biblical standpoint. And I thought, you know, why can't we do that? It, it, what about, uh, there's nothing for a person that has just become red pilled because it's a very lonely place when uh, a person you know is blue pilled all their life and, and they believe the mainstream narrative and then they, boom, they, they take the red pill, you know, so right. red pill, and then they have this very much this, uh, alternative minor viewpoint that other people mock and one's own spouse might even reject and uh, one's friends and family you know will see them as this unusual uh person you know to, and to stay away from get sucked into all the random tiktok videos and you know <laughs> right Illuminati, did you see what this video of michael jackson did? i mean there's a lot of uh, fallen angel <laughs> right. stuff on there but yeah there isn't really a a, a safety net like the fringe christian community to right. to catch those people usually unless they right. somehow find us by accident we but should make a documentary the, called Cons christian conspiracy 101 or or christian yes, something red like, pill that would be awesome. something 101 you know that's a that's actually a super that's a good great, idea it's a great idea man it's a great idea because yeah it is it is kind of you know and i and i often think about it from the new christian perspective because like mm. if you just jump let's just throw out a name like if you just jump into this that you got you got safe right. you know that god is god you know jesus and you're you're firm right and now you jump into the deep end of the fringe you might you might drown okay yes. and and it, it is it's it's tough to navigate this world because no doubt there's and i'll say this there's at least a lot of teaching that i like but it needs to turn into a conversation, not yes. teaching. Don't yes. teach right. me. Don't don't tell me that your point of view of the UFO topic is Gospel. written written in stone. It, yeah, it, yeah. It, it it's a possibility. It might yes. play out that way. It's good to know that possibility, but don't teach it to me like it's gospel because it's not. You know, right. and that's where mm. people, I think when we communicate 
you know, and I, I try to do this. I don't know if I am, I I'm not getting a lot of feedback, but I try to tell people continually like, Hey, we need to have a conversation. We need to keep it a conversation because if exactly. I write a, if I write a book and I'm saying, well, this is how it plays out and then mm -hmm. it doesn't play out that way, or I'm wrong. Yes. Guess what? You're a false teacher. It doesn't yes. mean that you don't love Jesus, but you are a false teacher because what you taught is false. So let's keep it, let's keep it a conversation. But you know, at the same time, you know, Jesus tells us that there's the wheat and the tares, right? And that's right. And he's he's God said, I let them grow up together. Let them grow up together. I'll sift them out later. In the mm. meantime, we're kind of well, we we've got Holy Spirit. And so yes. The number one thing that we have to realize, whether you're into the fringe stuff or whatever, is that you need to know Holy Spirit. You need to know his presence. You need to yes. know his voice because he will lead and guide you into all truth. And that's, Hallelujah. that's Amen. amazing that we get that you know, that we get, like, what did we do to deserve, like, the the creator of the universe to come into our room and talk to us and tell us stuff, you know what Amen. I mean? So I think it's, I think it's awesome. That's, you know. Absolutely. It is amazing. The Lord has done an amazing work in, in all y'all's lives, as the Southerners <laughs> say. <laughs> Spent some time in the sea, so they rubbed off. But you know what's oh. great about that, too, is, though, that there's that hunger, like, yeah, okay. I've been to Mars. I'm back, you know, um, went to Narnia, you know, saw these <laughs> ghosts, fought the demons, went to heaven. And here we are. And we're still hungry. We're like, we want more. And that's why I think God brings us together because we each have something yeah. like you have something that nobody else has to add. Let's not just listen to Steve Quayle all day. He's bringing a lot to the table, but he's been doing this for a long time. And so it's like, who are, who are like, I love what you're saying about the next generation. Like, how do we set them up to get into this and, and where we can kind of gently guide them in and then expect them to bring something to the table as well. Yeah. So, yeah, I think we're, we're right on the brink of all the things, these crazy stories coming true and it's all coming true right now, actually. But, um, but yeah, like the next thing, what do we do, Mike? I mean, what do we do? Do we just keep talking or what do we make, do? We meet, do we make, pray, make more, you know, make more TikToks. <laughs> TikToks. Tick, is it, is it TikToks. I need to. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know what? I'm, I'll say this. And I've been saying this for a while. I mean, right now, if somebody in the fringe community and it's, it's a lot of work, but you don't like you, you, you watch TikTok videos. It doesn't, you don't need to have them very well produced. Like they've got all the tools in there. If there is, if somebody picks up the mantle and I'm challenging you because Camp Herman's not really going in that direction, right? But I still see the void. If there is a person out there who can make TikToks and make coherent fringe content, it will blow up so quick. Um, oh, yes. but I don't, I, the, the ones that I see, like, you know, Michael was referring to, they just sound crazy. They don't, they're not like somebody sitting there presenting an actual Bible verse. It's just like, Oh my God, the end Trump is the antichrist. He just signed the deal with Jerusalem right on to the next video, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now that person in the back of their mind, oh, yeah, Trump is the antichrist. Screw him. You know, go to the next video. But if someone mm -hmm. It's, there, there's a huge opportunity there for somebody within the fringe community. So maybe you're listening to this podcast and you're wondering what I should be doing. Maybe you're, maybe that's you. Maybe it's you that you can yes. make coherent TikToks on Absolutely. fringe stuff. All right. You yes. got the homework guys make coherent TikToks. You're on. That's right. Balls in I've your been, court. <laughs> I've been trying to make that's some TikTok videos. Yeah. I really, I really appreciate um, Michael B for putting the his TikToks. He's live every night. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm only putting out videos like once uh, or twice a month, if that. And um, but I've been trying to take a, a, a small segment of the, those two hour podcasts, mm -hmm. like this one, and I'll put like Mike Sib says, uh, the most hard hitting, you know, thirty seconds or one minute in, in, into a TikTok, if to make a, a YouTube short or a TikTok, mm -hmm. you know, video or what have you, and and they're getting hits, especially when you put the hashtags on there. Right. Um, I think the the one that's the most popular is the one where I, I had um, 
created uh, a one minute video of what Derek Gilbert was saying about the return of Saturn. And uh, because of the hashtags, it got a, a few thousand views. Where, I mean, to me, that's a big thing. I mean, oh, wow. maybe to somebody like awesome. somebody else might, you know, be pretty small potatoes. But for me, that's a big thing. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's where the youth are. Uh, even even middle aged people, they're they're mm -hmm. on TikTok as well. And that's the way to reach these people uh, now. And, uh, you know, oh, by the way, I wanted to mention Gab. Has anyone heard of that, that Christian? Uh, yeah. social media site gab.com he oh. wants to make gab.com he wants to make a parallel economy and such that people are it's almost like a facebook but it's totally free speech where mm. during the pandemic people could talk about the jabs um, from a christian perspective people could talk about anything i mean as long as you don't incite violence and and what have you you know any sexually derogative thing or whatever um that you are able to to freely post your videos um i think it's like ten dollars a month to have your own website on gab and um uh, he um andrew torbett andrew torba sorry he uh, he he used to work in Silicon Valley. Then he, then he made uh, the gab gab.com where it was free speech. And then he's been rejected and ostracized by PayPal and all these other different formats. So that that tells you something when some of these these heavy hitters won't do business with him because he stands mm -hmm. up for Christ and because he he wants to make a free speech platform. And he's been vilified in the news saying, oh, well, his website you know promotes you know white supremacy, which is to you know totally false. You know there might be a few people on there that spout white supremacy stuff but it's not like he is part and parcel of that but um i i would i think that that would be a good place you know for us to migrate to because facebook and youtube will eventually clamp down on people like us and and some people have gotten totally gotten the boot um from, from youtube and, and facebook because they they refuse to edit their speech um i know michael b has had his uh youtube taken down and he had uh, uh what thirty thousand followers is that right Oh no, we had like seventeen thousand, but it was the but amount still, of videos. It was like kind of just the unedited, like endless video monologues that it was thousands of videos. So I haven't had time to to re-upload them, but but this this the, this internet censorship thing is a, it's a real thing, and it's forcing us to start developing our own communities on alternative platforms like Gab, like all that. I mean, I've got all of those. But um, it takes time and and to build something. So that's why, again, I would recommend just, I mean, as far as social media and interacting with people, and we're all Derek Gilbert fans, go get the Gilbert House app. Yes. Whatever you guys end up doing, we'll promote that. You know, it's like we all have something unique to bring to the table. Yeah. Um, so that's right. anyway. Yeah, really cool. This was this was fun. This what a good it was fun. Man, two hours went by fast, guys. Yeah, it's it cool. <laughs> it does. When you fellowship with brothers and sisters of the Lord, it goes by really fast. Well, Mike, we've really enjoyed having you on the Strange O'Clock podcast. And everybody, go to camphermon.com and go to Camp Hermon on YouTube to, to check out uh, Mike's awesome videos as well as um the podcast for Camp Hermon on there. You'll see an archive of like around three or four years worth of videos from Mike Stibbs. And uh, thanks so much for listening and or watching the Strange O'Clock podcast with Jerry and Michael. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> wow, thank you so much. And wait, did we do we have anywhere that people can donate to you guys? Because everybody's so humble these days. Yeah, they could go just go to camphermon.com. There's like an introduction video there. You could sign up and be a, a member. Um, you get a couple of perks there, but mostly it's just it's just a, a donor into the the vision of what we're doing. So yeah, just watch that video and then you could, you know, if you want to, you can. If not, you still can listen to the podcast and it's all good. Absolutely. Thanks so much, Mike. We really appreciate your time and uh, all you do for the kingdom of God. Well, thank and you have guys. a great honor. Thank you so much. We've been honored and privileged uh, to have you on our show and it was it was a lot of fun. Thanks so much, everybody, for listening or watching the Strange O'Clock podcast. Have a strange and supernatural spirit-filled day. Bye, everybody.